the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother, will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar, and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar. Go first, and be reconciled with your brother. And then come and make your offering. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid every penny. <laughs> You have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. <coughs> Again, you have heard that it was said to your ancestors, do not take a false oath, but make good to the Lord all that you vow. But I say to you, do not swear at all, not by heaven, for it is by God's throne, nor by the earth, for it is his footstool nor by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Do not swear by your head, for you cannot make a single hair white or black. Let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no. Anything more is from the evil. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel contains five teachings of Jesus on the law. Anger, adultery, divorce, and vows. Without wishing to abuse the truth, I recall in general the main thrust of a book called Animal Farm, written by George Orwell. 
There were no rules, no laws, nobody in positions of authority and responsibility. This was to be utopia, where everyone would get along, as things should be. And nobody would dream of upsetting or rocking the boat. And everybody would live happily ever after. Unfortunately, the story doesn't turn out that way. All of the stories about animals, the point of the story is that without structures, without rules to guide behavior, without somebody taking responsibility to animate or to lead the group, we also can descend into anarchy and self-destruction. Jesus, Jesus doesn't want to do with the, away with the law. Rather, as we hear in this morning's gospel, he wants to fulfill it. He does not, however, want the law to become an end in itself. The law is there to serve the people, to guide, to protect. It must never be used to control or oppress people. An example, a man is in court for doing 90 miles an hour on River Road, although it's a 30 or 35 mile an hour zone. He's broken the law, which was put in place to protect rather than oppress people. And Jesus tells us that all laws come from God, and therefore for a law to be valid, it must be made for the common good. But Jesus is more in favor of a law of love rather than a law, a law, a law of a love of law. And whether his teaching has to do with anger, adultery, or divorce, what he's really speaking about has to do with love. And he lays great stress on forgiveness. That's a powerful word. This deacon Ed read today, of bringing your gift to the altar. Well, if you do so and you remember that there's someone out there hurting because of you, leave your gift off to one side, go off and be reconciled with that person. And then come back and bring your gift to the altar. If we speak about loving God and loving our, our neighbor, then there must be no contradiction there. It would surely be a contradiction to be reciting lovely prayers to God and not speaking to our neighbor next door. Matthew 25, whatever you do, to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do unto me. Now he's clear and definite when it comes to giving one's word. There's no need for solemn oath if I'm a person of my word. And that was important to Jesus. He says, you're either against me or for me. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. He himself is emphatic about the sincerity of his promise to us. He gives his word. He says that heaven and earth will pass away before my word passes away. Now it's difficult to speak about adultery or divorce. In my 36 years of preparing couples for marriage, I have never felt that any couple came in with the intention of getting a divorce later on. And I credit all my couples with the highest and best intentions. And as it can easily happen, things don't always work out as one in hoped. For example, an alcoholic doesn't set out to become an alcoholic. This is something that creeps up on him or her, as it were. Adultery can be wrong on grounds other than morality and sex. It can be a lie. 
because it can imply a commitment that is not there. And that one party at least has no intention of there ever being a commitment. But the whole subject of today's gospel has to do with honesty and integrity and genuine love. I must confess that I'm a bit caught in a bind with today's gospel. It contains clear and definite teaching from Jesus. So, surely, we must give it our full attention. I myself, however, cannot bring myself to proclaim any sort of blanket condemnation of adultery or divorce. And that bothers me in a way. But over the years, I have known many people who have been divorced or involved in adulterous relationships. And I know them to be good people. As Pope Francis says, it is difficult to condemn the sin without the risk of judging and condemning the sinner. Most people that I know are quite aware of what's right or wrong. And I don't think you can legislate morality. There is an inbuilt barometer in the human spirit that instinctively informs us when we're right or wrong. And so the biggest lies in life are the ones we tell ourselves. And we will never be honest with anyone else until we're honest with ourselves. Today's gospel has a lot to do with honesty again and integrity. There would never be a war, or indeed there might never be a divorce, if someone was prepared to say, I'm sorry. Those of us who grew up right in the 50s and 60s remember that wonderful movie love story. The song, Love Means Never Having to Say You're Sorry. Give me the worst advice we ever got. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. It may sound simple, but it is difficult for some people to admit to being wrong. In fact, our own pride can often blind us to the fact that we are wrong, and we fail to see things as they are. You know, it's a wonderful freedom to be able to face up to the truth. And when we are wrong, to probably admit it. One of the great wonders of the world is the Great Wall of China. And it's said that it's the only landmark on Earth that's visible from space or visible from the moon. It was built as a protection against invasion from neighboring armies. And after that entire mammoth endeavor, some bribe gatekeeper opened one gate and allowed the enemy through. So much for human endeavor, right? While the Christian life is a sign that should be seen from far and near, it is a sign of contradiction, of course, and in that it insists there's another way of living. There's another set of values other than what we're presented in our materialistic world. But the only way to preach this message is to live it. Someone said, you write a new page of the Gospels each day. By the things you do, the things you say, people read what you write, whether faithful or true. So what is your Gospel? according to